Man, you guys, MMA fans, uh, kind of a sad day today. George St. Pierre officially announced his retirement, but I mean, at this point, you kind of have to expect it, right? Um, I mean, he hasn't fought in five years, a little over five years, I think. Um, or maybe it's only been four. I'm, I forget. Uh, no, no, never mind. I'm, I'm totally wrong. I'm, I completely forgot about that Michael Bisping fight. Never mind. Never mind. I'm, I'm way off on that. But I feel like it's been, you know, probably two years. I, I forget when he fought Michael Bisping, but that had to have been at least a year ago, maybe two. But prior to that, it was the Johnny Hendricks fight. Um, you know, so I just, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird thing for me because... He was arguably my, my favorite fighter, um, you know, just everything about him, everything uh, from the way he speaks. I mean, he was just very, very classy. Um, I actually had the pleasure of very briefly meeting him back in, uh, what was it, August of 2008 or 2009, whenever he fought John Fitch, UFC 87, um, at the Mall of America. I actually, he walked right past us. I have a picture somewhere. Um, if I look for it, I'm sure I could find it, but I don't have it on me right now, but that was pretty surreal. You know, he walked right by us. We were able to give him a handshake, um, and just his, his fighting skills, you know, it was just, it was beautiful to watch. You know, he just moved so gracefully, just like floated on that canvas. Um, and you know, just the way he mixed punches and elbows, um, you know, kicks, knees, takedowns, um, and when he first came onto the onto the scene um, in his early twenties, he he was more of a um, you know he didn't really care if if he took damage much. He wasn't fighting for self preservation. He was he was just going out there to entertain, and he would he would you know fight those gutsy battles, just throw, go toe to toe with guys, not afraid to get hit. But then as he progressed in his career, and he started to understand the importance of winning, and how with winning comes money, sponsorships. Um, you know, he started to prioritize um, the importance of defense and not getting hit. Um, you know, avoiding getting hit while landing punches himself. Um, and so he kind of changed his fighting style um, into one that revolved around not getting hit, taking as little damage as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, for me, it was still exciting. A lot of people kind of jumped off the George St. Pierre bandwagon when he developed that style because they started thinking he was playing it too safe. You know, and he was, wasn't taking any chances, wasn't taking any risks. Um, but I disagree. You know, he was, still, he was still fighting the toughest guys out there. So it doesn't matter how you fight. When you're fighting the baddest motherfuckers out there, it's a risk just stepping in the cage with these guys. You know, and you want to spend 25 minutes in the cage with... With the toughest dudes out there, that's a risk in itself. You know, it doesn't matter how you fight. Every second in there is a risk. Um, you know, and he was just so fun to watch. Physique was second to none. I mean, I mean that guy's physique is, is just flawless, you know, from top to bottom. Um, and it was just like, it was just something special seeing George St. Pierre fight. And I'm going to miss seeing him fight, you know. Granted, he is, I think he's 37 or 38 now. Um... You know, arguably, arguably his, his best days are behind him, but, you know, he was one of these guys who he took such a calculated approach for every fight. I mean, like, if he was taking a fight a weight class above or two weight classes below what he normally fights at, he was going to come in and do it right. This isn't a guy who was just going to decide like that and jump in there and do something without, um, you know, the confidence and knowing that he's been through it in training um, you know, just very, very obsessive about the details. I have his book. Um, I have OCD, obsessive compulsive, so I, I kind of know how his brain works. Um, and that OCD can, I mean, it can be, it can be a pain in the ass, right? It can make life difficult, every aspect of life, life difficult, but it can also be a blessing, an absolute blessing, because it forces you to over-prepare, overthink, um, and just you know, basically to the point of exhaustion, you know, you're constantly entertaining, um, every single possible thing you can do to get yourself to perfection and whatever it is you're pursuing. Um, and George, 
certainly had that, you know. So this guy, there's no doubt in my mind that he worked harder than anybody else in the sport. Even off the mats. When he was off the mats, I, I guarantee you, man, he's logging the hours mentally. Losing sleep over it. Obsessing. You know, constantly training and preparing for the worst possible scenarios. Putting himself in the worst possible positions and forcing himself to find ways to get out of that. You know? Prepare for the worst, but hope for the best, right? Um, you know, so I kind of understand how his brain works. OCD, anybody who, who battles OCD, you guys know that that mentally, it's 100 miles an hour all day, every day. And especially if, you're, if you care about something, if you're preparing for something, you're thinking about it nonstop. You know, it's keeping you up at night. It's, I mean, it's forcing you to do three, four times the reps everybody else would do because they're not overthinking it the way you are. So that's just the kind of guy that George St. Pierre was. So you knew if he took a fight for Michael, um, example against Michael Bisping, a weight class above, you knew that he was going to do the right things, that he was going to, um, you know, focus on strength, getting, putting on a little size, a little mass. Um, you knew that he was going to specifically come up with a game plan to nullify his, his opponent's strengths. And, and maximize his. And the people he surrounded himself with, John Danaher, um, Faraz Zahabi, all these other guys who were very calculated themselves. And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why he was so successful. You know, he surrounded himself with the right people, um, mainly Faraz and John Danaher. Um, those two guys, man, were like, you know, they, they were like the backbone of George St. Pierre's um, crew. You know what I mean? Like, and those three together stuck together like glue. I mean, they were as tight as could be. You could see it and their bond and they just, they trusted in each other. And he, he would constantly go out of his comfort zone and seek, you know, ways to improve constantly. Like immediately after a fight, he's in the locker room the same night drilling different techniques that in his mind, he feels like he made a mistake during the fight. He's doing it right then and there. He's not waiting until the following Monday, two days later. He's doing it right then and there. Obsessive. Obsessive in his approach. And, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that. If you want to be successful at something, in some way, shape, or form, you have to be obsessive about it. You have to think outside the box. You have to go above and beyond. And you got to be a little bit crazy up here. You have to be. You know, because if you're not hungry like that, you're going to get, somebody's going to pass you by, plain and simple. You know, there's so much talent. There's so much potential out in the world. There's so many people out there that would literally kill to, to have what you have. You know, so if you're not a little bit crazy up here and you're not an animal, you know, locked inside of a cage and, and, and you don't go at every task in your life with that kind of intensity, like the, like the door just opened, you know, and you're, you know, all jacked up because you were all cooped up. If you don't go at everything with that kind of intensity, you're going to get passed by. Somebody's going to pass you by, and you're going to get left in the dust. Um, and, uh, yeah, so George St. Pierre, just um, very obsessive, very calculated in, in his approach. And I think that's the main, you know, determining factor in why he was so, so successful, in addition to um, just having people he knew he could trust around him in his corner. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to miss watching that guy fight. Just a class act through and through. George St. Pierre, thank you for the years, man. Best of luck to you, um, you know, in the future with, with any for anything and everything you do. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the years.